Hey guys, it's Josie and it's time for another pop star. We talk about everything from the lowbrow to the highbrow as long as your eyebrows are on fleek. And I am super late on getting this up because if you can't tell, I am not currently home. I am in Florida visiting with family. I'm currently at my mama house and um, you know, trying to record in somebody else's house. It's just a little awkward. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little different. So we are going to try to get through this because there is so much to kiki and talk about. So what are you sipping on today? I have a glass of Moscato because my mother doesn't drink regular wine. She drinks Moscato. So clink, 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 clink. If this is your first time watching Pop Snark, be sure to thumbs up. Of course, comment along the way. I would love for you to join this discussion. This is all about creating a dialogue with my smart brown girls, boys, and the like. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and join all the smart brown girl fun over here with me Jewel Z I finally launched our smart brown girl shirts in kid sizes not only in just kid sizes but we have onesies and shirts for toddlers as well as soon as we get those rolled out and orders start coming in we will launch our plus size. also if you want to meet Jewel Z that would be me out on the road I will be in South Africa as part of my 30th birthday well like trip I guess I'm going to South Africa from March 11th through the 17th we are currently attempting to plan a meet and greet which is a little bit different because I've never been to South Africa before I am not currently there to plan the event um, but we as soon as I have more details I will announce it it's going to be in Johannesburg probably on March 13th or 14th and I will announce it obviously via YouTube Facebook and Twitter and Instagram so it is good to be sure to follow me and engage me on all those social media platforms I will be in Paris for a layover that's a full day on March 18th that's a Wednesday I've been toying with doing a meet-and-greet I don't know because I'm it's my first time in Paris and I'm only gonna be there for 24 hours and really I just want to drink some cheese eat some wine and give me some macarons and you see the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre, the other fancy-ish. I can't speak French, y'all. But I don't know if it's worth trying to do like a small meet and greet on a Wednesday evening in Paris. I don't know how these things work, but feel free to comment down below and let me know. Or you can always email me tacos at julesy.com. Yes, because tacos are my favorite food. That's a real email. I will be in Atlanta on the World Natural Hair Show weekend at the Kinky Haired Unlocked event on April 24th. I will be in Cincinnati on Memorial Day weekend for the Midwest Mind, Body, and Beauty Expo. That is May 23rd and 24th. And then I will be in Detroit on July 11th, 7-Eleven. Wave your hands and wave them to the side. Is that how Beyonce? 7-Eleven? Um, at the Embrace the Natural You <laughs> event. I will have links for everything down below. First up is Bruce Jenner who was in a four car accident this past weekend and yes he has been in the news because apparently he is transitioning from male to female. Um, let's just talk about this car accident first because it's kind of crazy. A woman did lose her life. They're saying it was looking like it's Bruce Jenner's fault because he was on his phone during the conversation and I think it is just crazy for this to be happening in the midst of him and being in the media already for a very controversial topic now with regards to the whole trans situation I've made a point to not talk about trans issues at all on my channel because I don't feel like I'm at the point where I can have a productive conversation around the issue and I don't naturally feel like the community is really at a point where the questions that I have can really be asked right now and there be the sort of discussion that I want there to be around you know trans specifically with regards to black women in this community way deeper than we need to get I'm trying to keep that same refrain with regard to the Bruce Jenner situation even though my hesitation with it is more sort of do with his dealings with Chris Jenner and the fact that he does come from a very media crazy and media obsessed family and he himself you know even though the Kardashians might have won up to him in being media crazy Bruce Jenner has always been a very mainstay in media to the point where people are accusing him of being a sellout and so yeah i just have kind of a, a pause with this transitioning to a woman thing and like yeah him and chris are divorced but like really um what's her role in all of this and how is she trying to flip this for some media coin because i feel i just <sighs> Recently, I posted an article on my Facebook page, totally unaware of the larger issue that was going on. I did not realize that there was a measles out. You wanna come say hi? My mother's here. She should come say hi. 
come I was in. actually getting ready to talk about anti-vaxxers. We were vaccinated as kids. All of you were. Well, there's this thing going on where there was a measles outbreak in Disney World, mm -hmm. and I did not realize this when I posted an article about how anti-vaxxers impact those who are too young or have immune diseases that don't allow them to get vaccinated. And I did not realize that it was that big of an issue, but people are not vaccinating their children because they feel like it leads to autism. I think it's the MMR vaccination that they believe leads to autism. And I think what's really happening is that autism spectrum disorder did not enter into the American context until the 1940s, so it's a very new disease. 40s? Yeah, 1943. Really? Mm-hmm. Get why it's so easy for people to fall into this fallacy of a belief that uh, vaccination will cause autism, but this vaccination has been around before autism was even understood in the American context, and so I just, I, ugh. It's just, it's not, it's, it's, it's a, it is, it's a very slippery slope and it's a hard conversation to have with people because people will regurgitate things that sound really good, but once you scratch me at the surface, don't really hold much fact and it's a hard time trying to get them to understand why this isn't. Well, that a lot of people were trying to say that this was a move by the CDC or the government to keep us back as sheep and kind of lead us to the slaughter. Why would you continue to go to the doctor at all? Why would you take over the counter medicine? You know, it's the same breath that people are saying, oh, it's the government trying to control us. People are also trying to attribute this to big pharma companies. And it's like, don't you realize that the pharmaceutical companies make so much more money off of over the counter drugs than they do over prescription drugs? This is why most of your allergy medications like Zyrtec and Claritin have become over the counter because they become accessible to more people, they can charge you a higher rate, and they're not subsidized by the government, benefit large pharmaceutical companies for us to vaccinate. And so I really kind of think it's funny that people will accuse big pharma companies of pushing the vaccinations on us when, you know, on the flip side, somebody can say that this is all a conspiracy theory to just get everybody confused. And in the end, because now so many people aren't pushing away from these vaccinations and we are having these art outbreaks and nobody can decide what the real causes of them are and at the end of the day we all still have to be medicated for them who's winning in this this discussion the pharmaceutical companies um but what i just really want to encourage people overall in this vaccination discussion is if you have questions learn how to properly question your doctor to get honest answers and i think that's where a lot of people have the problem with is having doctors that do not have good bedside man bedside manner but somebody did recently ask me if i was going to talk about kendrick lamar's blacker the berry single that dropped the day after the grammys on pop Snark. and i told them no and that was not a lie because the other night when I recorded Pop Snark, I did not talk about Kendrick Lamar's new single because I had not heard it yet. I've heard it and I listened to it and so now we finna talk about it and thank you for your suggestion, girl. Shout out to you or guy. I don't know who that was because it was anonymous. But um, the day after finally winning a Grammy to make up for his snub that he got last year at the Grammys, uh, Kendrick Lamar dropped a single, Black of the Berry, via Taraji P. Henson, who's giving us all the teas on Empire playing Cookie, which is the only reason any of us watch Empire. And Kendrick Lamar, Black of the Berry, basically was, uh, to me, kind of like a rebuff to his recent um, interview with Billboard that a lot of us, including myself, took issue with because he spoke a lot of opinions that kind of aired on the side of respectability politics. And he took the bet and went to bat for Iggy Azalea, and you know, yeah. And it's it. I, you know what? We just want to talk about Kendrick and this new song because I do appreciate him calling out his own hypocrisy and really kind of talking about his own internal struggle with having a public voice and being able to speak about things in a public forum but still feeling a certain way about what's going on in his own community and trying to figure out where he lies with all of that. I love the cover art. The title is based off of Wallace Thurman's book, The Black or the Berry, which I will be ordering off of Amazon. I'll link down below. I think I'm gonna read it soon and maybe one of these days I'll get around and start that book club I've been talking about, girl, yeah, sooner than sooner. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's so much work. I apologize. But overall, I really just, you know, regardless of Kendrick Lamar's previous Billboard M 
interview, I never really held that against him so much because I have, you realize that a lot of these people whose music we enjoy listening to, they, I, don't, I don't necessarily need to always agree with their opinion. But I also definitely appreciate his humility and I appreciate that I feel like his association with Flying Lotus is rubbing off on him because even though this song was produced by I think Boy Wanda, I just enjoy the overall kind of, I'm getting a lot more Flying Lotus vibe between I, which won the Grammy, um, and now Black of the Berry, and he actually is on Flying Lotus's last album um, with the song Catch Them If You Can, I believe is the title song. I don't know, the video is dope though. Definitely check out the video. I'll link it down below, it's a super cute video. I watch, I listened to the song on YouTube and so, you know, I listened to it a few times to really kind of get the gist of the lyrics because it's heavy. And I, I, what it was most amusing is that I kind of ended down the rabbit hole because there was somebody who commented and I had never heard of them before, The Third Pew, and he had a check next to his name so I clicked on his profile because that means he's legit in the name of YouTube. Um, but, you know, in clicking his profile, it was like really interesting to discover someone who has been able to blatantly talk about black racial issues to a post-race audience and like be accepted for it. And I think it's super cute that he can make race very palatable all because he's friends with Tyler Oakley. Like, ugh. I was like looking through his stuff and I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then, but then it also kind of makes me sad. Well, sad, but not sad. It's like a really weird realization when you realize how engaging kind of the white or the non-black teenage youngster, teenage young adult audience is in contrast to black women. I promise you, black women are the lurkiest of lurkiest of lurkiest audiences ever. And so maybe, you know, I kind of, I'm understanding, I'm more understanding and less frustrated when brands or companies or potential opportunities tell me that they, they're unsure about working in this sector because black women are really kind of not that easy to work with. And it's, I think the examples are clear when I look at kind of the, my lateral peers who have similar content but are able to engage a racially ethnic, a racially different kind of audience and age group and their engagement rates are like super duper high like between gay men and young adults way more engaging than whoever's watching y'all be just lurking i i personally feel like i have a very lurktastic audience I don't know why y'all be lurking. I don't know what you scared of the cookie monster coming for you. Ain't nobody fitness still your social security number just because you commented on a video, boo boo. But that was just, you know, ended up down a very deep rabbit hole, went even further from the third pew. I had to stop. I had to stop because you start getting down that rabbit hole of like young, average looking, non-black content creators who just do videos doing blah. And girl, you can just, Mm, that can really mess with your head, like for real. So I had to back up. Iggy Azalea. <laughs> we ain't even got to the Grammys yet. This child is just ugh, But Iggy Azalea, because she's a lost puppy in a world of appropriating black culture, and she can't seem to catch a hint. And she also couldn't catch this hint when she went to order a pizza, a pizza from Papa John's, which she ordered with her real cell phone number. I don't even give my cell phone number out to Papa John's. And I promise you, homeboy ain't like, Julesy, let me give your number to my sister. Promise you that's not happening. It's called a landline, a Google number, your friend's number, a random number. Does Papa John's really call you when they deliver? Don't they ring a doorbell? If they're delivering it to a hotel, they call your hotel room number. I am so confused at how this breach of whatever happened, according to Iggy, when she could have just used a secondary number. Like using some common sense, girl. It's free. The Serial Podcast, which quite a few of you have proceeded to tweet me, ask via Ask FM, or just flat out ask in the comments, because I don't know how anyone missed the, the fact that the podcast is actually called Serial, like S-E-R-I-A-L, because I said it several times in the two different pop snarks where I talked about it. I don't get it. 
I don't know why. There will be a link down below where you can listen to it. But Adnan Seeds appeal was granted and a hearing is set for June. Thank you all for tweeting me about it. I heard about it. It's happening for real. Bobby Christina is in the news, of course. It's not looking good for her. Supposedly, it's supposedly it's some ish that I really don't want to regurgitate because I feel like the news is being very unethical in covering the story. Just an attempt to be the first to get the most clicks. It's all about the ad revenue. And really, it is a very, very, very sad situation. And it's one minute this is happening, and the next minute the family's saying, no, actually, that's not what's happening. And I'm going to wait. Either way, prayers up, and that's why I stand with it. Yeah, girl. So with regards to Real Housewives of Atlanta, I'm just, I'm not here for Todd. Like, I never thought that day would come, but I'm just, mm. I don't like the way Todd speaks. Like, I don't like his tone of voice when he speaks. I don't like how abrasive he is when he talks. And I guess, you know, but so much of it can be editing. Technically, he used to. Thank you for agreeing with me. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like Candy neither, though. Like, Candy just doesn't, she don't have enough of a backbone for me. And I feel like, I don't, that, yes, I don't think she, she doesn't choose, she just always seems to miss the mark on when to set someone straight and when to actually be upset at someone. She just gets angry at all the wrong people and just, she's constantly shifting blame and then nothing ever gets resolved. Portia is still dumb as doorknobs and I think I'm at the point where I might have to stop watching Royal Housewives of Atlanta because I don't feel like it's portraying the message that I want. I feel like it's airing on the side of where it really is. You know, for Portia to have so much kind of bravado around having fake tits, nice teeth, and a cute weave, but no substance beneath that. And you see how many people are really kind of feeding into the storyline and, and feeding into this image she's presenting as something desirable. It, it's 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 slightly defense, it's offensive. It is, it's some, um, yeah girl. I guess you guys thought I was gonna do a Grammy recap, but we're gonna do that in a completely different video because I have to keep this under 15 minutes. So, you can watch my grammar review after you watch this part of my video, and I want to thank you for watching. As always, make sure you thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe, leave a comment, and share with your friends. Get the word out. Don't keep me to yourself. And go copy your smart brown girl onesie for your daughter, your niece, your cousins, your best friend, sister, your goddaughter, all that. All right? Deuces! Oh.